Hello everyone! Today we'll be talking about the top 7 most expensive things you can buy in Stardew Valley. But before we get to that, we've got an announcement. If you haven't already heard, Stardew Valley is coming to the Switch on October the 5th, which is Thursday. So if you have a Switch and don't have Stardew Valley, there's your opportunity. Stardew Valley, finally coming to the Nintendo market. I bet there's a lot of people excited for that. Anyways, back to this top whatever list. And why top 7 you ask? Well, that's because I didn't want to do the other 3 items that would have made a top 10. So coming in at number 7 and my personal favorite of everything in the game is a divorce. It costs 50,000 gold, it takes your wife out of your life. You simply file for divorce, 50,000 gold, and the next morning your wife is gone. Just like that, no problem. It can obviously only be done after you're married and you get it here at Mayor Lewis's house. His house opens at 8.30, it's just that easy. The best part is your wife or husband has no idea it's coming, it just kind of happens to them the next day. Unfortunately though, you're still stuck with your children, you've got to take care of them by your own means. The 50,000 gold it does cost is actually pretty reasonable, because by the time you're married you probably have a lot more money and a pretty good farm going anyway, so it's an easy choice for me. Coming in at number 6 is conveniently a good place to keep your children and that's a cellar, which costs 100,000 gold. It is the final upgrade to your house, so you need to get the other two first. This simply costs 100,000 gold. And why it is so expensive is because you can fill it with these. These are casks, and this is the only place in a game you can even put these. That's what makes it worthwhile, and what these do is age artisan goods. It takes them from regular quality all the way up to iridium quality if you let them sit for long enough and that greatly increases their value, although it does take a while to do. And you can get quite a few casks in here. I think the typical layout is about 117, 120 depending on how you do it. I've obviously laid mine out pretty inefficiently, that's because I'm being lazy. If you want, you can fill the whole thing with casks and just fill them up and work your way out. And then when they're done, work your way back in. That works too, but it takes a lot of work. Now, normally, in order to take something like wine from its regular quality all the way to its iridium quality will take two full months or 56 days. But once it's done, its value is greatly increased. The beauty is, you can just put it in there and forget about it for two seasons until you want to come back and sell it or give it as gifts. Or just drink it. Now for reference on the value of this, I've got 112 aged starfruit wines and 112 regulars to show you what the value actually increases is to see what kind of return you can get on your $100,000 seller investment. So your investment of 100,000 gold will turn a batch of starfruit wine at 350,000 gold into iridium quality at 705,000 gold, so it doubles the value of it. Just from having that seller, you've made double the money, 350,000 extra gold, single batch. Keep in mind, the starfruit wine is the most expensive, it is the way to get the most money out of it. But obviously, your 100,000 gold investment, well worth the money. Also, your seller can be used for other things if you want to put other things down here too, it just doesn't have to be casks, I just do it because it's the only place you can do it, and they make you the most money, and I'm all about the money. Coming in at number 5, we have the Golden Kitty Statues also known as the Statue of Endless Fortune. These cannot be bought until you've unlocked the desert and more specifically the casino and this shady guy in the corner is who sells them to you. 1 million gold for one Statue of Endless Fortune. Now, what you get in return for your 1 million gold investment is that every day they will produce a single item. They will produce you either a gold bar, an iridium bar, a diamond, or an omni geode. From a strict gold and money perspective, they do not make their money back at least for many, many years. So if you think you're going to make money off these, I wouldn't bother. But it is immensely helpful to get all these iridium bars, otherwise you've got to go find the iridium, you've got to smelt it, that can take up time. And gold bars and diamonds never hurt in themselves, the diamonds are valuable, they make good gifts, gold bars are used for crafting. The Omni Geode can produce you all sorts of things once they're processed at the blacksmith, they can help you finish the museum, they can give you all sorts of artifacts, gifts, whatever. Another important use to note from these statues is that if it's someone's birthday, they'll produce that person's favorite gift. So if you see an item like a lobster come up, well, it's someone's birthday out there and all they want is a lobster, so you give them that gift and it'll give you so many friendship points that you won't even know what to do with yourself. So from a money and profit perspective, the Statue of Endless Fortune, definitely not worth it. But for helping you move forward with some of the crafting and friendship applications of the game, they are worth it. But it's up to you when you want to shell out that million gold. If you have lots of money to burn, absolutely buy one or two. But if not, I wouldn't waste my money on it, there's more profitable things to buy. At number 4 we have the Water Obelisk. It costs 1 million gold, 5 iridium bars, 10 clams, 10 corals. It warps you to the beach. From wherever you place it, you place it on your farm. And that looks something like this. Instant build, it just magically appears there. I don't know why it has to cost things from the sea, but that's probably actually the most annoying part because if you don't have any corals or clams, by the time you're ready to build this, it's really actually hard to find those things. It can take a bit of time. Iridium bars you just obviously collect over time because they're valuable and hard to get. 
The money's just the money, but those other two ingredients, pretty annoying to get a hold of. Which is why I often say you should never get rid of anything, hold on to everything, make a hundred chests if you have to, keep them organized so you can find everything, and don't get rid of anything unless you really need the money because everything has a use somewhere down the road and it's really annoying when you need it and suddenly don't have it again. Now what exactly do you get for a million gold? Well, say I step out of my house one morning and I want to go to the beach because, well, I want more of that coral that I just used to build this thing. So I click on it and disappear. Then I appear right here by the little warp totem on the beach. It saves me probably 20 seconds of traveling time. But is that really worth it for its million gold? Well, let's explore that. Look what's at the beach today. Ignoring my statues of endless fortune which I have here for some reason, let's collect all this stuff and see how much money we make in response to our 1 million gold investment. Plus all the coral we find of course. Keeping in mind that my items are all iridium quality because my foraging skill is at its maximum level so everything I find is iridium and therefore it's most valuable. We'll throw these in the bin, I also often find multiples because of my foraging skill, let's see the value. For our million gold investment on a single day's return we get 2350 gold. That doesn't exactly stack up to the money spent but this item to be fair is all about saving the time and it does save you time getting to the beach. But I never bother with these obelisks unless I'm really, really far into the game and really bored because normally you'd have a horse you can just ride there. It doesn't really save you that much time. You're definitely going to want to have a lot of money before you bother with one of these and they tend to take up a lot of room. Obviously if the purpose is to save time you want to have it close to your front door otherwise it defeats the purpose and that puts them at an awkward location. And I generally like to have money making items and giant crops so I don't often bother with these. Which brings me of course to the earth obelisk. Guess what it does? It warps you to the mountains. It costs 1 million gold, 10 iridium bars and 10 earth crystals. And pretty much the same thing, you place it somewhere on your farm that you think looks good and then you have a big tower standing in the way in your field. Again, the ingredients for that aren't too bad to get. The iridium bars you're probably going to have by the time you have millions of gold. The earth crystals can be pretty hard to find. I haven't even donated mine to the museum in this file because they're so hard to find. You find them in the mines, often from the little things that dig out of the ground, kind of like moles. Again, keep stock of everything you ever find in the game because then when you want an earth obelisk, you'll be able to get one without having to go spend two hours in the mines, which is about how long it took me to do this the real way. Anyways, the earth obelisk will teleport you here, right to the center, right by the carpenter shop, close to the mines, the lake. And that saves you about this much time. I'm actually going to take the time to walk all the way back at normal speed to show you what you get for your million gold investment. And again, it's not very much. Along the way, we'll even say hi to our horse. He's been missing for some years now. Hi, horse. And just like that, we're almost back. So a million gold doesn't really get you that much. Like I said, it's pretty much a luxury, it's not going to make you money, it's only to save you a little bit of time, and again, you have to put it close to your front door. So with the obelisks, only get them if you have a gross abundance of money and resources, other than that, they're just wasting time. They do look kind of cool, so maybe you want them for an aesthetic feature, or completion, whatever the case, they're hard to justify. Coming in at number 2 is one of my absolutely favorite items ever in the game, and that's the Return Scepter, which you find from the town's local drug dealer down here in the sewers. His name is Krobus, he is a little black fellow, and the item I'm talking about I've already bought, but it is the Return Scepter. The golden handle quivers with raw potential. Hold this scepter to the sky and return home at will. So what it does, you use it, not on Krobus, on yourself, and before you know it, you're right back at your front door. That is really handy because it'll teleport you from anywhere at all right to your front door. So you want to do a late run in the Skull Cavern? You can do it right till 1.50 a.m. teleport back and still make it in bed before you pass out. It really is very handy. But its cost is quite high, 2 million gold. But this one I do think really is worth it because it'll save you all the tedious travel time. Because by the time you have enough money for it, you've walked to town and back a hundred billion times and you're pretty sick of it. This is definitely an endgame item, you cannot even get it until you've done a bunch of the endgame quests. But once you do, totally worth it. Everyone's talking to the slimes this morning. Hello slimes, do you like my return scepter? It was quite expensive. So no, it will not make you any money, but it will save you so much time and be so convenient that I would buy it every time. Plus by the time you're at the point where you can buy, you probably have the money for it. Which brings us to our final item. Number one on the list, most expensive you could possibly buy, another endgame item. That's the gold clock. Prevents debris from appearing on your farm. Keeps fences from decaying. Its cost, if you can read that, 10 million gold. Well, that's easy. We'll get one right now. 
it can go right there where it looks nice. Normally I would tuck this up out of the way because it doesn't really serve any physical purpose as long as it's on your farm, it does its job. Again, this is one of the endgame items bought from the wizard. The wizard is who you come to see for all your endgame stuff. This is what it looks like, doesn't occupy a very big footprint, 6 spots. Like I said, normally I tuck it way up here somewhere where it's well out of the way. And once this is up, no more debris on the farm. Obviously stuff that exists is still here, but once I cut it, it won't grow back. But in saying that, they should actually have an asterisk beside that because grass, this stuff that grows fastest of all, still grows. The weeds and sticks and rocks don't, but the grass does. So if you let your farm sit for any amount of time, it's just covered in grass anyway. Grass, of course, does have a use. You can harvest it, put it in your silo, use it as fodder for your animals. But if you're like me, you don't really have animals, so the gold clock is kind of a useless point. And in saying that, trees will also still grow. The trees will sprout up, still grow over time. They are pretty slow, but they will still show up too. So the actual purpose of the gold clock, I feel like they missed. Fun fact though, it really keeps the time. See how it's about to hit three o'clock? Three o'clock here, three o'clock up here. Is this item worth 10 million gold? Absolutely not. That is a huge amount of money for this game. You can make that kind of money, obviously, but it's going to take you some time. It's just one of those things to say, hey, I've got it because I can. It is kind of helpful, but not nearly helpful enough for its 10 million gold investment. I think it'd be pretty easy to tweak the gold clock, at least give you some options. You should be able to select it and decide what can grow on your farm or what can't grow. That way you have a little more control over things. Instead of just spending a huge amount of gold, they have it do pretty much whatever it wants and not anything particularly useful. If I wanted the debris off my farm, I want all of it off. That way nothing grows. The whole point of these endgame items is so you don't have to continually do the tedious things you've been doing for the past 200 hours. So the fact that he still has to do it, not that great. Well that concludes the top 7 most expensive things you can buy in Stardew Valley. Let me know if I forgot or missed anything or should add anything. I kind of threw this one together in a hurry so I'm really hoping I didn't overlook any details. Stay tuned for more videos like this as always. And as always, thanks for watching.